is the entire conservative independent media all funded and controlled by the same foreign country? We have the downfall of Jordan Michaela Peterson this week. That's spicy. We'll get to that. We've got a founder own business to shill today. One of my favorites. We'll get to that. We got all kinds of crazy news. President Biden was over at NATO, misnaming all kinds of crazy people. And then it just didn't stop. He held his big boy press conference and called Kamala Harris Trump. Um, yeah, Biden's on the way down. Who knows what's going to happen with that, sh that shit show. Welcome to the show. I'm your host, Ian Carroll. Let's get her rolling. Conspiracy theories are dangerous. Information is the oxygen of a democracy. With Republicans, with progressives, with libertarians, because this is not about right and left. This is about right and wrong. It's so sick that we can't talk. Our security is at stake. I want to open the show today by talking about something far bigger and far more important, and that is the military industrial complex. With all these forever wars going on all around the world that have been, you know, started by, shall we say, the regime ever since they got their guy into the office, um, it's important to revisit where's all of our money going and what's it doing and what are these wars actually funding? What's like, what's the purpose behind forever wars? Because if you're a millennial like me, you grew up in the era of Afghanistan and Iraq. We were told that those wars were for a good cause as well. But it turned out over time, it became quite apparent that that was not the case. There were several other motivations and almost none of them had to do with securing the Middle East or protecting anyone. And now we've got the war in Ukraine. We've got the war in Israel. We're funding both. And all of our tax dollars are just flying out the door to do who knows what. So when you look at the stats... We spent $175 billion on the war in Ukraine since it started a couple years ago. That's a lot of money. And a lot of people don't like put together where that money is actually going. Those $175 billion are not going to families in Ukraine. They're not going to like food and healthcare in Ukraine. They're not, they're definitely not going to food and healthcare here. Your groceries are still expensive. You can't afford healthcare. Those dollars are going to military industrial contractors, to defense contractors, to Lockheed Martin, Raytheon, Boeing. It is in the contracts that that $175 billion is directly paid to the U.S. government military industrial complex. And they like to phrase it as though they're like writing it into the bill so that we'll keep the jobs in America. We'll keep the money in America. We'll keep, we'll be spending all that money on American made and then sending American made over there to fight the good fight. But does that money actually benefit any of us? When we spend $175 billion on tanks and missiles and bombs and ammunitions and guns for Ukraine, does any of that money actually come back and help you? The answer should be pretty obvious. Um, and the answer is no. It helps Lockheed Martin. It helps Raytheon. It helps Boeing. And you know, they, they section it out. So they've got like budget support straight to Ukraine, laundered right off into the coffers of Lord knows who. And then they've got the full piece of the budget that is allocated to weapons, equipment, and other military support. Here you can see it's $69.8 billion dollars. That is directly paid to military industrial complex actors. And that money is not coming back out to you and me. It's not like, sure, the workers at those factories are getting their salary, their wage, which they were getting anyways. Um, that's not really benefiting America in any big way. Most of that money is being paid out to shareholders, stock buybacks, CEOs and executives at those companies and scuttled away into who knows what kind of dark programs they've got running off the books. We're looking at you, Skunk Works. And when you look at the military aid to Ukraine, it absolutely dwarfs every other country that we've been given aid to in the last while. Part of that is because we've been printing money like fucking crazy. And so money is not worth what it used to be worth. So back in the war in Afghanistan, for example, we didn't have to spend so much to launder so much. But now your money ain't worth shit. So $106.9 billion by this chart, you know, the, the numbers vary. It's all fucked. Um, just, you know, keep inflation in mind. But it's not just America. 
It's actually also the whole EU, Germany, United Kingdom, Denmark, Japan, all kinds of countries are dumping money into Ukraine. And all of that money is being laundered out into the military industrial complex. And it's kind of weird to even use the word laundered because they're doing it right in front of our faces. Like they're not lying about it. They're just convincing you it's a good thing to give hundreds of billions of dollars of our taxpayer money, of these other countries' taxpayer money to the war machine. Like, let's not forget, you're funding the war machine to protect democracy. Let's not talk about the Maidan Revolution, 2014, the CIA, all that. Uh, That'll get your YouTube channel banned. Can't imagine why. I'm sure they're banning people for telling not the truth. And that's not even to mention the war in Israel. Aid to Israel is up dramatically, although I don't believe that the amount for 2024 has fully been decided yet. I'm sure it'll grow and grow and grow. All that money going to Israel is also going to American and Israeli defense contractors, intelligence contractors, the military industrial intelligence state. And all of that money is just funding violence, control, bad shit, real bad shit. (laughs) It's not good. You are not funding democracy when you are sending money to forever wars. And Democrats used to know this. This is not like a fucking crazy idea. I was gr- I grew up in the Democratic Party. I grew up a complete and total liberal. I voted for Obama. Like, I was fooled too. We used to call out, like, the war in Iraq, just because it was George Bush, I guess. Maybe it's because it's a Republican president. The Democrats were fucking all not, ag- not about it. Like, what changed? What's the difference? Let me know. Like, at least for the other one, we had a nice, big, totally legit terror attack that was totally committed by Afghanis and Iraqis, right? Right? Uh, And that helped us justify the war in Afghanistan and Iraq because the terrorists came directly from Iraq and flew those planes into you-know-where and did the what with the thing, right? So it was justified to go to Iraq, at least. But Putin and Ukraine? Like NATO, like it just blows my mind how many people have such strong opinions having never done any research. And I didn't have a strong opinion either until I started doing some research. And now my opinion is getting stronger. But you know, there's always more to learn. So do some research. You know, just don't do your research from the perspective that the US is the good guys. Because since when the fuck was that true? Just saying. So anyways. Oh, real quick though, before we move off of this topic, let's not forget that spending on the Ukraine war is massive. It's totally fucked. But that is a drop in the bucket compared to, for example, the interest payments on the federal debt that we've accumulated so far. Essentially a running tally of all of our forever wars all added together. But let's not forget the biggest forever war of them all, the war on you, the COVID bailouts that basically went directly to giant mega corporations, shut down all the small businesses, fucked you over, gave you pennies on the dollar, and gave all the corporate CEOs, all the big companies, big pharma, billions and billions and billions of dollars. Like, how many small businesses in your town never came back? Hmm? How many mom and pop shops closed down forever? Walmart didn't. Walmart is doing great. But they were sure to blame supply chain disruptions for the rising prices, despite not actually needing to raise their prices and making record profits while they were doing it. So just throwing that out there. Remember, the corporate state is evil. The military industrial complex is evil. Supporting wars is just giving your money to them. Doesn't matter how just the propaganda makes it sound. Like, who do you think fucking controls the propaganda, guys? Like, who do you think? You live in the biggest empire in the history of the world. And you don't think that that empire has an advanced propaganda state? Like, your brain is there for thinking. I'm sure that the U.S. military industrial complex, the largest empire in the world, would just totally not have a propaganda machine. Like, what the fuck? Who do you think is the propaganda machine for the U.S. Western Democratic Empire? Fox News? Yeah, it's more than just Fox News. Let's be real. Anyway, speaking of Fox News, let's talk about conservative media and people fucking burning their platforms down. If you have not been on Twitter lately, holy shit. 
Jordan and Michaela Peterson just burned their shit to the ground. Um, it only took them like a week to do. And it's right before they launched their brand new academy. They're launching this new Peterson Academy. It looks like it's coming. Uh, they've been working on it for three years. Holy shit, guys. Peterson Academy. Uh, two and a half weeks coming, coming soon. Poor timing, guys. Really poor timing. Um, because they got in a flame war with Nick Fuentes. I don't know if they knew who they're getting in a flame war with on the internet. Um, it all started. Where's my where's my first tweet? It all started totally unrelated to them. They didn't have to get involved. <laughs> he was not talking to them. Nick was just doing Fuentes stuff on some other poster, this guy named Lomez. And this guy was asking, just like, you know. The weirdest thing about this is realizing we don't have a president and haven't for a while. And nobody has any clue who is making decisions on behalf of our country. Nobody even bothers to ask who exactly is in charge. Nobody knows. Nick Fuentes replied with just one word. I'm not even going to say it out loud because if X is hiding posts about it, see visibility limited, this post may violate X's rules against hateful conduct for saying just that word. Right. So it's obviously the context that makes it hateful content. Right. Um, I'm sure they wouldn't have added that note if he had said any other race, religion, gender, identity, anything. Right. Except maybe if he said trans people, trans people are pretty fucking touchy these days. Um, but anyway, that did not sit right with Michaela and Jordan Peterson. And they decided to go to fucking war. <laughs> they started calling Nick Fuentes a rat. Where's my Jordan Peterson calling Nick Fuentes a rat? Fucking screenshot. Oh my God. Yeah. So Jordan Peterson called him a rat. Um, he later doubled down and apologized for calling him a rat saying that that is mean to the rats. Nick Fuentes is worse than a rat. Meanwhile, they're not communicating too well. Cause meanwhile, Michaela Peterson is saying that calling Jewish people rats is like the most anti-Semitic thing ever. You should never call a whole group of people rats. That is just super anti-Semitic and like, cool, whatever. I don't care. Uh, you know, argue about your language however much you want. She starts calling for censorship of speech based upon a group that she's not a part of being theoretically offended by a tweet by some 25-year-old dude who she has nothing to do with. And Nick points out that her dad called him a rat the other day. And she's like, man, nah, it's not just different. It's calling an individual rat versus calling a whole group of people rats. Uh, it got real messy real quick because <laughs> the internet did what the internet does and they started to notice huh jordan you're taking an awful lot of money from the daily wire i wonder who you're aligned with over at the daily wire like who's this a photo of who are you shaking hands there with jordan hmm what's that guy been up to lately any blood in that handshake there i mean just asking questions telling jokes just telling jokes, guys. Just jokes, YouTube. I'm sure this video is already demonetized, though. But anyways, the internet didn't stop there. <laughs> the internet started going off. Andrew Tate got involved. I don't even know how Andrew Tate first came up. Um, but it was noted that Michaela Peterson had visited Andrew Tate over in Europe. And they'd taken some photos together that looked awfully close shall we say, even intimate? I mean, you tell me what those eyes say to you. I mean, I'm just, I'm just saying, like, <laughs> notice the hand. I mean, the internet's going off. Like, the internet is not, not dumb. Like, the internet sees this shit. And then the edits started to happen. <laughs> oh, boy. Check out this ruthless edit. This is like, oh, man me to come see his house and talk business and he flew me over there i was there for a day he was talking about starting a paywall trying to figure out how to monetize content so we took a couple of photos one's in the cigar lounge and then i flew home just because i flew over there and talked to him doesn't mean there was anything sexual that occurred So anyways, the ratios rolled in. They were not kind to Michaela and Jordan Peterson. Although I couldn't help but notice that once it heated up big time and once it started to become like a whole thing on the internet, I couldn't help but notice that Jordan Peterson's likes went from like under a thousand to like 20,000 
overnight, which is interesting. Just saying. Um, bot farms are a thing. Um, and then they started swinging at everybody. They just started swinging at fucking everybody. Sam Parker, Dr. Anastasia Maria Lupus. I mean, the whole host of anti-Zionist accounts on X, they were all suddenly at war with Jordan and Michaela Peterson. And to be fair, they were attacking Jordan and Michaela Peterson too. I mean, I took some shots. But like, you know, they just they just started throwing punches that might that might come back to bite them. Like Dr. Lupus pointed out the thing about the corn industry and Michaela thought that was pretty fucking racist. Um, as though there was like a whole wealth of examples of other people that run corn farms, so to speak. Yeah, I challenge you to find the other ones out there. It's it's pretty stacked deck in one direction. And I don't know what that means. I don't, I mean, I'm just... Those are just facts. Like these are just, you know, I'm just, I'm just reporting the facts. I'm just telling you what happened on Twitter last week. Okay. Michaela Peterson coming in hot. My concern is if people are too dumb to see that screaming quote, Jays are filth is the same as what the Nazis did. They'll fall for all the propaganda. Like the entire nation did about a hundred years ago. Um, that's not what was said, Michaela. That's not what was said at all. The filth thing is coming from Candace Owens, who was calling a specific man filth who had been attacking her for like two years and in the on the side selling sex toys with his daughter. And he's like, is pretty fucking filthy. It was not a religious attack on an entire religion or group. And now here you are conflating it as though that's what Candace said, not what she said. And that is like the tactic over and over and over. By the way, Candace spitting fire as usual. Firing back at Eminem. Candace got two full diss tracks in Eminem's new album that he just dropped. Like, holy shit, life goals to get diss tracks from the fucking old ass Eminem turned mainstream empire propagandist. Like, bro, dude, congratulations, Candace, on the diss tracks. Nice job. Um, and just real quick, we should just take a second to say that when I'm laughing at this, when I'm pointing all this shit out, that doesn't mean that I agree with everything that Nick Fuentes says. Not at all, bro. That does not mean that I agree with everything that Candace believes. Like, that's not how ideas work. That's not how the internet works. That's not how people work. That's not how the world works. You're an individual. I'm an individual. There are, we're all individuals, right? You can have your own opinions. You can watch the world happen and it doesn't immediately become your opinion. You can talk about someone and not immediately adopt their beliefs. You can think something someone says is funny and not think that everything they say is gospel. It's like super simple. It's like, like, anyways. So lighten up, calm down, relax. It's going to be fine. You're going to be okay. You are not going to turn in to a Nazi overnight just because you watch funny content on the internet, just sit back and laugh. Ideas are external to us. You are not your ideas. You are not anyone else's ideas. Ideas can change. You can change your mind. You are a soul in a meat suit with a brain. What the brain does, it's up to you. Deal? So anyways... If you want to know more about the Jordan Peterson situation, go watch Candace Owens' video about it. She broke it down in no uncertain terms, uh, talking about Jordan Peterson's, you know, alleged apple cider gate, the history of potential substance use, abuse, you know, doctor prescribed, taking it out of the lines a little bit, talking about both Michaela and Jordan Peterson's sort of like, you know, evolution as people. Michaela fired back saying, man, that is just such a fucking low blow. Like, why would you ever say that? And to be fair, like Candace roasted the fuck out of them. Um, I don't know. Don't come into the kitchen if you ain't ready to cook, dude. <laughs> that's that's all I'll say. Because y'all are trying to launch your, your Peterson Academy. And that is not a good time to get into fucking internet wars with the Groypers. Let me just tell you, the Groypers don't fuck around. And if you don't know about the Groypers, probably better to keep it that way. Just go about your day. And... uh <laughs> If you see a frog person on the internet, just leave them alone. Just leave them alone. You don't need to. You don't need to step in that. And we'll finish it off with Mr. Tate coming through hot. Maybe I'm crazy, but destroying the Petersons feels like bullying. It's too easy. 
I pray for you, sir. I pray for you to achieve a degree of mental fortitude and resist this very public meltdown. Fucking classy, bro. Probably one of the classier things Andrew Tate has ever done. But in a way, the classiness is almost like a slap in the face. It's almost like he's like, I mean, come on. I mean, come on. And again, you don't have to agree with Andrew Tate on anything to just laugh at the situation. <laughs> like, I disagree with Andrew Tate on tons of shit, but this is pretty fucking funny. <laughs> so, anyways, I hope Michaela enjoyed her business trip. I feel sorry for her husband. <laughs> think about this. <laughs> think about this. Michaela Peterson is not named Michaela Peterson anymore. She's named Michaela Fuller because she's got a husband, <laughs> she's got a kid who is totally not the child of Andrew Tate. Don't you ever say that. This meme is just a joke. Uh, but the whole internet still just refers to her as Michaela Peterson, as though her husband did not exist, as though her name was never changed. Because she's more, shall we say, aligned, associated with her daddy than with her husband. And she has not broken that that connection so the whole world still just sees her as her dad's daughter and everything they do reflects on each other because they're real close and her poor husband i don't even know who he is or what he looks like because sorry bro <laughs> just i'm just saying i mean be careful who you marry and i'm not saying don't marry michaela peterson i'm just saying like marriage is a big choice and be careful who you marry. Okay? Moving on. Moving on. Other news of the week. Elon Musk dropped a spicy uh, allegation, shall we say, on X yesterday. Uh, the European Commission have offered X an illegal secret deal. If we quietly censored speech without telling anyone, they would not fine us. Whoa. The other platforms accepted that deal. X did not. Dude. I mean, we know it's happening. Like, come on. But that is a very spicy allegation. And if that's true, I mean, I assume it is true. Like, he's probably not tweeting without receipts. He does own the company. Like, he he has the receipts. So, uh, sue them, Elon. Fucking let's go. Release the files. Release the details. Let's go. Freedom of speech is more important now than ever before. Like, and it's coming under fire now more than ever before. And as we get closer and closer to the election, I have been saying this for quite some time, the censorship is going to ramp up. The control state is going to ramp up. The media advertising establishment trying to take money away from independent creators that say things they don't like, like yours truly, that's going to ramp up. It's up to all of us to fight back. Big props to Elon for what he does do to fight back, even though he's not perfect, you know. Credit where credit's due. Um, Biden, I'm sure you've seen the news. It's been all over the place of Biden calling all pe kinds of people the wrong names, calling fucking... <laughs> what, did he, what did he do? He introduced Zelensky as Putin first over at NATO um, after giving this whole fucking long speech at NATO about Ukraine. The whole speech is about the war in Ukraine and Ukraine is not a member of NATO, right? 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 Like, anyways... That's all it was. And then he fucking introduced President Putin of Ukraine to come up on stage. Anyways, then he called Kamala Harris. Donald Trump caught himself just in time, corrected it real awkwardly. Uh, but the real story is actually to look at the faces of the men that are actually running the show. You know, the guys running the military industrial complex. You know, the intelligence complex, the CIA, foreign relations. These are the guys that actually matter. And their faces say a lot. Just imagine how much stress they're under. It's like, fuck, we got to replace this guy. Fuck, the plan says don't replace this guy. Fuck, my boss at the bank says like, we're going to roll for five more days. Whatever the fuck they're being told, whoever's pulling their strings, they're not happy about their role in all this. Like, And their faces say a lot. It's a shitty job, bro. Maybe you shouldn't have signed up to be fucking evil pieces of shit. Anyways. Onwards to the SAVE Act, you know, saves nobody, but would make it harder to vote. It's demonic. It's a Republican scam to take away voting rights of Americans. Holy shit, dude. 
198 Democrats voted against a bill that would make it so you have to prove you're a U.S. citizen in order to vote. Why would they want you to not have to prove that you're a U.S. citizen in order to vote? It's almost like that Republican conspiracy theory that everyone's been shitting on for the last year and a half, two years, is real. I mean, I'm an American citizen. The whole point of being an American citizen is I get a vote in my country. But fucking Mexicans don't get a vote in my country. Chinese people don't get to vote in my presidential election. Russians don't get to vote in my presidential election. But when you've got an open border at the southern border, not only is there like record amounts of fentanyl coming over, record amounts of human trafficking, which is a real thing, by the way. It's not a Republican conspiracy theory that human trafficking exists. Like Jeffrey Epstein was not alone. That's a fucking network and it is global and it is big and fucking powerful. But anyways, man, I'm demonetizing this video everywhere. Like that's the problem with real content is like everything is fucked. So everything you talk about is fucked. But the point is that when you have an open border, Russians can cross it. Chinese people can cross it. You know, North Koreans can cross it. The enemies of the U.S., Ir Iranians can cross it. You feel me? It's not just like poor Mexicans coming across the border. It's a wide open border. And the U.S. has enemies all around the world, like terrorist states, right? Like, let's follow the mainstream narrative. All of these fucking Middle Easterners are terrorists, right? They bombed the Twin Towers. They're bombing Israel, death to America, all those things they say, right? Those guys are like their job is to come into America and do terrorism. And we have a wide open border. A whole other issue. Why would we want them voting in our presidential election? Hmm? Couldn't have anything to do with Biden losing the black vote that he's been relying on for so long, could it? Just, I mean, replace the black with the brown, you know, out with the old, in with the new. I said, do you know why he want to fast track four million? Because he know he's not going to do nothing for us. We ain't going to be motivated to vote for him November. So what he's going to do is have these migrants already set up with citizenship so they can replace the black vote that he loses. The migrants are being put in our communities on purpose, New York and Chicago on purpose, because they are what? The two blackest cities in America. They're the two largest cities in America. They're the two most politically conscious black communities in America. So if we can wash out the black with the brown in New York, if we can wash out the black with the brown in Chicago, Philly don't stand a chance. Now let's look at what Ari Adams is doing over there in New York. A family of four is getting $1,400 a month. $1,400 a month. Do you know that that's more than what some of the veterans are getting with a child? They're getting more money than veterans who served in the military. Damn. Not only that, they're getting free food stamps, free child care, and permanent housing. Although New York City has a black homelessness rate no less than 35%. So you got black people who pay taxes living on the street, and you got migrants who ain't paid a single tax in their life eating and living better than the black people who built the country. At this point, as an American citizen, you would probably be better off leaving the country and entering illegally and getting a whole bunch of free money, free housing, free health care, whatever the fuck. Like, it's mind blowing. And I am not a Repu like I am. I come from the left. All I do is actually research what's going on instead of just thinking, OK, a Republican said it, it must be a conspiracy theory. Open your mind, bro. The CIA, the military industrial complex, the intelligence state, they're all benefiting from the wars going on around the world right now. They are in bed with the current administration, just like they were in bed with George W. Bush during the war in Afghanistan and Iraq. They want war. Now they've got two of them. So think about the policies that are being told to you by that side, by that media, by that propaganda. Those policies are good for the established military, industrial, oil, pharma, war machine establishment. Anyways, we'll see what happens with the SAVE Act. I don't anticipate good things. The election is going to be crazy. On to founder of the week, the coolest section of all. Brett founded the classicallearner.com. He was not pleased with the state of education in America, with the education of his kids, 
we're going to be getting in a public school. And so Brett founded a homeschool company that helps support you homeschooling your kids, or even just helps support you teaching your kids in addition to whatever they're learning in school. And Brett's homeschool company publishes books that you can buy that will teach your kids about things like their rights, the constitution, what it means to be an American, how to think scientifically, how to eat healthily, how to be a good person, you know, the basics. You can get 10% off your order at theclassicallearner.com when you use my code, cancel this. There's a link in the description below. I get a tiny cut of those profits when you use that code, when you use that link. And other than that, this is not a paid post. Brett is not paying me to say this. This is just me shilling for a homie that's doing a good thing in the world. That's kind of how this founder-owned section is going to work. It's like, fuck running ads for big corporations. So founder-owned businesses, you want to work together, hit me up. Big mega corporations full of shit, go fuck yourselves. That's the business. On to the next. The ratio roundup before we finish off the day. Man, the ratios are fucking all over this place this week. Um, I'm kind of on the fence about whether I want to just feature my ratios because I love them. It's like my fucking soul. Oh, I love it so much. But there's lots of other good ratios out there too. So we'll, we'll, we'll transition over the weeks to like getting away from my ratio ego and getting into everyone else's ratios too. Um, but man, it's just too good. And I'm so glad that when, when Elon hid the likes, he didn't hide the, the, the number of likes. He just hid who liked it. It was a smart move. It was a smart move. It's good. Because the ratios are just oh, they're too good. Um, we got the Krasenstein bros, as usual. You know, low-hanging fruit. Uh, don't mind picking that. It's sad to see Nazism reborn in 2024. It's as if humanity doesn't learn from history. Or maybe people are just so pathetic that they want to find others to blame for their lame, creepy lives. Uh, bro, first off... Stop calling everybody Nazis. It just destroys the word. The thing about English is that when you overuse a word, you're the boy crying wolf. And suddenly the words have no meaning, right? Right? So, bro, until you've learned the most basic history of the CIA, stop calling people ends and talking about learning from history. You're doing their job for them, and you don't even know what it is, referring to the CIA's job. And buddy boy Ed clearly doesn't know the history of the CIA. Because if you did know the history of the CIA, you would have a very different take on the world. And I got to say, guys, I got to say, like, the thing that woke me up from blindly supporting the Democratic Party and everything they do these days was learning about the CIA. Because when you learn the history of the CIA, you start to notice things, you start to notice patterns, you start to notice that like, huh, I wonder what the CIA is doing these days, because they're not doing nothing. Right? And then you notice like, huh, the director of the CIA is, was good buddies with Epstein. He went to Jeffrey Epstein in, I believe, 2014, asking for his help getting a job. And Epstein helped him get a job at a globalist think tank called the Carnegie Endowment for International Peace. Why did the U.S. ambassador to Russia, who had a long and successful career in U.S. government, need help from Jeffrey Epstein getting a job at a think tank? Kind of weird. And then, right after that think tank, director of the CIA. Kind of weird. And then when you look around the rest of the CIA apparatus, the other people in charge of it, you just notice an awful lot of Israeli-aligned people. Like, I don't know. CIA and Mossad have been joined at the hip basically since the CIA was founded because the CIA was completely incompetent when it was founded and they needed someone to help them do their job because they sucked at it. And they had this buddy boy named James Jesus Angleton who actually was like Israeli and he worked at the CIA and he was like kind of the liaison and he did a lot of helping get jobs done out in the world using Mossad assets and then just selling all that intel to the CIA so the CIA could pretend like they didn't suck at their job. But newsflash, they do. They always have. They still do. But, you know, credit for trying. Credit for trying. All right, on to the next APAC. Oh, fucking love a good APAC ratio. Bragging once again that 100% of APAC endorsed Democrats have won their primary race this cycle. Oh my gosh, I'm so happy. Look, a foreign lobby bragging that they control U.S. elections. I wonder where they get their money to do that. Oh, wait. You don't know because they're not registered under FARA and aren't required to report it. Huh. Weird. <clears throat> One of the most important ratios if you're in the stock market is Robinhood. Just tweeting out bullshit. I don't know why I wasn't following Robinhood so I can't shit on them more often. If you don't know, Robinhood is fucking 
Satan on earth. Robinhood exists to buy your trading data, sell it off so that people like Ken Griffin can make money by out trading you in dark pools where your trades don't even affect the market. So, so anyways, I ratioed the fuck out of Robinhood on their cute little post right here. And it got so bad that they hid the reply. And then once they'd hid the reply, all the homies screenshotted it and just posted my reply into the comments over and over and over. And now the comments on this post is just like dozens of screenshots of my ratio of them. Cause fuck you, Robin hood go to hell. If you're still in Robin hood as your trading app, can't say I didn't warn you. You're going to get fucked. And then to close it all out, we'll give Nick Fuentes the W on his ratio of Michaela Peterson around the whole like, corn farmers questionnaire and Nick just dropping the bombs. You and your father are both complete frauds. It's all free speech and open debate until one particular group gets criticized even a little bit. And then you're the first ones calling for censorship. Total hypocrisy. We see right through it. 32,000 people agree with him. Goddamn. You can see why they kicked this guy off the internet and didn't want him on any fucking platforms for multiple years. Newsflash doesn't help. It only makes people grow stronger. So that's our show for the day today. A million things we didn't get to. There's so much happening in the world right now. We're going to try to keep this schedule up of at least one of these a week. I got a lot coming up this week, but I will see you next week for Cancel This. I've been your host, Ian Carroll. Go drink some water, eat some food, tell someone you love them, touch some grass, do human shit, okay? Do some human shit. Get off your fucking screen, okay? Love you. Bye.